we're making great progress so far. It's time to start working on posts. Before we do that, we'll have to talk about the loop first. In the resources section, I provide a link to the loop's codex page. Let's check it out. Here's what WordPress has to say about the loop. The loop is PHP code used by WordPress to display posts. Using the loop, WordPress processes each post to be displayed on the current page and formats it according to how it matches specified criteria within the loop tags. Any HTML or PHP code in the loop will be processed on each post. So what WordPress is saying is that it's just a set of functions that WordPress provides so you can display posts. It's called the loop because you actually have to use these functions in a loop. It's pretty simple, so let's get started. First things first, we have to add support for featured images. In our functions file, let's call the add theme support function and pass in post thumbnails. I'll provide a link to the resources section just in case you want to read up on this function again. Now our theme supports post thumbnails and we can use those images in any posts. Let's open up the index template and start using the loop. Look for the section tag with the ID of blog posts. This is where we'll be running the loop. You'll notice I have some static blog posts. We don't need these anymore, so let's delete the last three posts and leave only one. We'll be using this one as a reference. Next, let's add some PHP tags and start coding the loop. In a conditional statement, we're going to call a function called have underscore posts. This function has no parameters and it does one simple thing. It checks to see whether or not the current page has any posts. But how does it know that? Well, WordPress is more than capable of reading the URL no matter what structure you're using and make the correct queries. It's all handled for you. This function will return true or false depending on what it finds. If true, then we should start displaying some posts. Next, we create a while loop and call the same function again. Why? Wouldn't this run an infinite loop? No. Once again, WordPress is very smart and will take care of making sure your loop doesn't run infinitely. Before we go any further, let's go into the reading settings page. There is an option for restricting the number of posts per page. Let's set this to 4 so we can set up some pagination later on. Let's also set for each article and feed show to summary. Back to the index template. Inside our loop, we're going to call a function called the post. This function is pretty straightforward. All it will do is query the database and get the current post in the loop. Once again, WordPress is smart enough to know which post to grab. It's very important we call this function first before we do anything else in our loop, or else we'll just end up using the same post over and over again. This assures us that we'll get a new post on each iteration. So remember that static post I told you to leave in our template? Let's cut and paste that inside our loop, like so. All we have to do now is make each part of this post dynamic. In the resources section, I provide a link to a page in the codex called template tags. On this page is a long list of functions that return information about the blog. You don't have to use these functions in the loop. You can use them anywhere in the template. Let's scroll down to the post tag section of this page. You'll see we have quite a few functions that we can use in the loop. We also have functions for the post thumbnail. Let's use one of them now. The first one we'll be using is the post thumbnail function. Inside our loop, look for the IMG tags that contain the featured image. Let's remove these and instead call this function. This function will generate the HTML for our image and output it. We can override some of the default attribute values. The first parameter is the size of our image. You can pass in a number if you believe you know a good size or you can take advantage of WordPress's post thumbnail size feature. In the resources section, I provide a link to the post thumbnail page. WordPress describes in detail about post thumbnail, but we won't concern ourselves with the whole thing. Scroll down to where it talks about the sizes available. From what WordPress says, there are four size aliases we can use. Thumbnail, medium, large, and full. Full can be thought of as the original size, so let's use full in our function. The second attribute is an array of attributes that WordPress will add to the HTML generated. The only attribute I want to override is the class attribute. I'm using Bootstrap so it would make sense to use the IMG responsive class. Let's use the key called class and set its value to IMG-responsive. That's all we need to do. So let's refresh our page and check out our post thumbnail. Sweet, you should now see something similar to what I see. You may have different images as FakerPress generated most of these posts and grabs random images from the internet. 
Before we finish this lecture, we need to do one more thing. Most posts won't have images. We can assume every post will have a post image. So let's wrap the div tag with a class of card image with a conditional statement. Inside this conditional statement, we'll use the has post thumbnail function. As the name suggests, this will simply check if the current post in the loop has a thumbnail. If it's true, then we'll display the image. That's a lot for now. In the next lecture, we'll make the rest of the post dynamic.